All right. Good to see everybody tonight. I wasn't playing on my phone. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I, I was just just letting everybody know. <laughs> grab your <laughs> grab your Bibles. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Second Corinthians this evening. Second Corinthians. I hope your week is going swell. It's a fun word to say. Swell. Second Corinthians. We're going to look at something this evening. We're going to read verses 1 down through verse number 6, and we'll get into this. Second Corinthians. Did I tell you chapter 2? Chapter 3. Second Corinthians 3. Verse number 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves? Or need we, as some others, epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient of our Selves to think anything of our own selves, ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Let's pray real quick, and then we'll dive into this this evening. Lord, again, we're just thankful to be here. I'm thankful that the, the kids are able to uh, go to Truth Trackers tonight. They're able to learn from their teachers, have a good time. Lord, I'm thankful for the teenagers meeting this evening. Lord, uh, I pray that you uh, encourage them tonight through the lesson that is taught. Lord, I pray that you meet with us tonight. Lord, I do lift up the Walter family to you. Lord, just um, the loss there and, and that feeling uh, that comes with loss. And Lord, I just uh, pray that you come. Comfort them. Let them know that they are loved, Lord, and uh, we love them so much. Uh, Lord, I just ask now that you empty me of myself, that whatever I say will be from you. Lord, speak to hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, there was a young engineer, and uh, he had traveled across seas to Ireland with his company uh, to work at a job. And at the time, he was engaged to a youngly, lovely, a youngly? <sighs> A lovely young lady here in the States, right outside Tennessee. And uh, at the time they decided, you know, you go over, it's going to be a two-year contract. Spend the time working there, save up some money. She said, I'll work here and save up our money. When you come back, we will purchase our new home. We will be married and we will start our lives together. So they decided that and he flew across seas. And as he was working, they would correspond via a letter and uh, as they're doing so he would write and she would write and after the months dragged on she began to question his faithfulness she said you're over there with all of those uh, um, beautiful Irish women and their angelic voices and, and, and all of this. And I'm concerned that you're not being faithful to me while you're over there. And he tried as hard as he could. No, I am being faithful. I, I, I promise you. Well, I, you know, uh, some of the girls are good looking, but I am restraining myself. I, I am faithful to you. The next package he got in the mail was a, a lo nice little note saying, I, I, I want to trust you. I, I, I want our relationship to work out. But he also noticed a small box and he opened it up and there was a harmonica inside. She said, the harmonica is to help you abstain from all those lovely young ladies. So in the remainder of your time there, why don't you learn to play this harmonica instead of be distracted by ladies? So the two-year contract was over, and her and her family went to the airport to meet this young man, and he comes off the plane, and he sees her, and he's excited, and he begins to walk more quickly, and he gets right about to her, and she holds up her hand and says, nah, hold it just a minute. She's like, let's hear a song on the harmonica. You know, uh, we like to have proof, don't we? We, we, we like to have proof. 
I, I, I want to know for certain. I, I, right, don't like it when somebody questions me for proof. That, that's just our ego. That's who we are. Don't, don't ask me. I'm, I'm telling you this is how it is. That's how it is. Right? But we want people to show us proof, but we don't want to be questioned for our proof. Right? And we live in this society that almost demands that we always have proof for ourselves who we are. We always have to show who we are to someone else because they're going to have expectations and standards placed on us that our words won't just fulfill. No, no matter how many times I say, I took out the trash today, there might be a side glance to the trash bin. Did he take out the trash today? We'll see. I'm not saying she does that. Okay, but that's an example, right? Mom, dad, I know that I went out back and I picked up after the dog. No, you didn't. Okay, we, we want to see proof, right? My son, he might come down and say, I cleaned my room. Okay, let's go look. No, 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 we don't have to look. Right? Why? Because we want proof, but we don't want to give proof at the same time. You know, Corinth right now, Paul's writing, it was a happening place. I mean, they're trading, they're wheeling and dealing, they're, they're all about. They, they're very knowledgeable people. They liked what was going on. They valued a good recommendation. Right? They, 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 they valued the credentials of somebody. And he begins to speak to that in, in chapter 3, verse number 1 here. It says, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Hey, am I needing to prove this to you? Right? Do I need to show this to you? Or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you? Or letters of commendation from you? Do I have to show you my recommendation letter from my boss? Do, do I got to give you my credentials? From God Almighty? Right? It, you know, even to this day, as, as Christians, modern day Christianity, we still value a recommendation. Our society as a whole still values and, and holds high the idea of recommendations, of credentials. Well, what's your degree in? Well, I'm here to apply for the job. Well, do you have a letter of recommendation from at least three previous employers? Right? Even our relationships typically stem from recommendations, don't they? This man is so good. Right? Oh, you're going to love her. She's right up your alley. She's just what you need in your life. Right? And we value these recommendations. But Paul's getting to a point here. He says, listen, as, as Christians, as somebody who is claiming the name of Christ, as somebody who is presenting who he is and teaching you as a representative of Christ, do, do I really need to show you these things? It, 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 do, do you need to see this? Verse number two, he, he pipes in, he says, ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. He said, listen, I, I know you're living in a society that values a, a recommendation so highly that, that values those credentials as something that, I mean, if you don't have them, good luck finding a position somewhere. Right? And that's where we're living. Right? I, I think Corinth was, was around the, 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 the same mindset as far as, listen, if you can't prove who you are in this field, I'm not going to hire you. And I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with that in the secular world. But listen, as, as a Christian, he's, he's making this point to them. He says, ye are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, and not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. Listen, as a Christian, when we present ourselves, the minute that you say you are a Christian, the world is going to look for the credentials. They're, they're going to look for the proof. Right? The old saying, the proof is in the pudding. 
right? And I guess technically that's not really even how the saying originated, but what is the proof in the pudding? Right, well, what is that? I, I looked up just a basic definition that says, generally, the expressions are used to say that the real worth of something, the, the real success or even the real effectiveness of something can only be determined by putting it to the test, by trying or using it. Right? Appearances aside, right? all the promises of what they're capable of or what they're going to do, put all of that aside just as best. Right? Understand this, with a good pudding, how do you test it? You take a bite. Right? The, the proof is there. You know, it's interesting. I was going to put some pictures up tonight, but I decided against it. But I looked up a few dishes that when I, I thought of this idea and, and I was uh, studying this out, I was like, man, you know, when we're proving things, sometimes things look pretty ugly. Right? I can't even say it good. Creme bule, creme, creme bule. Right? The, the, the French. Uh, how do you say it? Creme, creme bule. I have a hard time with that one. Okay, but when it comes out, some of you be like, no, it looks delicious. No, it doesn't. Have you looked at pictures of it? It's like orangey, gross around the edge, and then it's like cracky and like darker in the middle, and then the light custardy color coming up from, it looks disgusting if you really think about it. It does, right? But no, you're like, no, 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 it tastes really good. I know because you've proved it. You've tasted it. Right? You, your opinion of that dish is a, nothing but a good thing. You would probably recommend it if you like it. Right? But somebody who it gets recommended to, they're going to be like, what? Um, are you sure? <laughs> I can eat this? Right? Like a good cheese and broccoli casserole. Right? That looks gross. <laughs> and that was hard for me to say that because I love it. Right? It comes out, I like the smell of it. I like when it's kind of crispy cheese. I, I, I like it. But when you look at a picture of it online, bleh, right? It's just kind of gross. Mustard? Some of you are like, oh no, it is gross. Okay, no, I love mustard. But you just go on a plate. It looks nasty, right? It really does. And we, we live in this society. Listen, I want to see some proof. I want to see some credentials. And Paul's saying, listen, as a Christian, to you guys, I shouldn't have to do this. If I say I'm a Christian, you can automatically see it in you. Right? I, I, I've, I've declared these things to you. I've taught you. I've, I've ministered to you. Right? I, I've shown you these things. Not because it's written in tablets. Not, not because I have something written down that, that you can look to and see that I have kept up with all this. But it's written on your heart. It, it's written on who we are. The, the, the proof that we have. And I, I think as Christians, we have such a, a tremendous proof to the world. We, we have such uh, this... I mean, it's not a recommendation, but it's who we are that we can really show forth. And it's in our fruit. It's in the fruit that we produce. What do you mean you're, 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 you're this? You're a Christian. You're a Sunday school teacher. You're, you're, a, you're, you're whatever. What, what do you mean that you're that? Well, look at, look at what I have to show for it. Right? Look, look, look at all of these individuals. It's not it's something that I've done. It's not something that I've written down that I can show you. But I can say, well, yeah, I'm a youth pastor. What do you mean? Look at all the teens. Right? Or, or, or look at the church. Look, look at who has been saved. Look, look at what I do as a Christian. Hey, world. Yeah, I'm a Christian. And look at my life. Look, look, look at who I am. You know, there was an artist, um, and he was traveling through uh, a country, and he lost his passport, and he showed up to the, the customs gate, and he's like, listen, I, this is my situation. I've misplaced my passport. I don't know what happened to it. I, I really need to, to keep moving, keep traveling. I need to get through. And the guy says, oh, yeah, really? You don't say. He's like, no, seriously, this is me. I'm this famous artist. You, you need to let me through. He goes, Really? He says, you know, people come through here every single day and they try to get across by using some famous person's name. They, they, they come through here and they, and they claim to be something that really they're not. He says, 
sir, please, this, this is who I am. He says, fine. And he reaches in and he pulls out a pencil and he hands it to him. He pulls out a piece of paper. He says, see those, those peasants over on the side? Why don't you sketch them for me? So the guy says, okay. And he draws a quick sketch and it was well done. It was a lovely picture. He says, here's the image. The guy says, well, okay, go on through. Why? Because he, he proved it by what he produced. Right? He, he was able to show who he was because of what he did. Right? It wasn't a letter from somebody else. It, it wasn't his traveling companion who's like, no, he really is this. No, he really, he is this. You know, and it's something that we always have taught the teenagers for the past 11 years, right? Listen, as a Christian, you can't base your faith in who you are off of someone else's religion. You know what? And that works with adults too, right? I can't say I'm a Christian and look to my wife and be like, see, honey, tell them, tell them I'm a Christian. They'll believe you, right? They're going to be like, what are you talking about? Right, and, and, and we run into that uh, in the teen world so often with various teenagers. No, really, ask my mom. I'm saved, ask my mom. She'll tell you when it happened. What? Hey, little one, you should know. Right, well, as adults, guess what? You can't rely on, well, just see, hey, ask them. I was in church last week, it's fine. That, that's me, I'm, I'm, I was there. I'm a Christian. Just because I go to an art exhibit doesn't make me an artist. Right? Just because I go to a music concert doesn't make me a musician. Right? But if I can produce something, if I can really show you something, then you might say, okay, I kind of believe you. Right? And when we're living in this society, guess what? People are searching for truth and we have proof of that truth. Well, what is it? It's the fruit that we have. It's a changed life. It's a changed environment. It's a changed appearance. It's a changed character of who we are now in Christ Jesus. And because of that, we have this amazing proof, not written down on a piece of paper that says highly recommended to you as Christian, but it's because of who God is in my life, on my heart. I'm a new creature because of that. He says, it's the, it's the fruit. It's, you're the proof in what has been done. Verse number four and five, he gets to this next point. He says, and such trust we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Listen, our, our proof is in our fruit, but our proof is in our humility. We're living in a very forward, in-your-face, Christianity-based society, right? If you're not claiming that Jesus is going to give you $100,000, you're not going to get it. You got to claim it, right? And you, we have to be careful. Hey, should we ask for things? Yes, right? But just because I say I claim this in the name of Jesus Christ, that, that, that doesn't mean much, Right? Especially if my life is lacking. Right? My, my fruit has to be there. But in a humility, man, we, we get to a point a lot of times and we're like, well, I would be perfect for this because <laughs> look at me. You, you need this in your church because I'm here now and I can provide it to you because I'm me and you need me. Right? And we have to be very cautious of that because according to my Bible, according to the word of God that I get to hold in my hand every day, James 4, verse number 6, says what? It says, uh, but he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. He resisteth the proud, but, but giveth grace to the humble. But Paul's saying, and such trust have we, right, through Christ to God word, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. It's not that I've come here because I think I'm some big deal and that you need me to be here and you need me to be a part of this and I'm going to sign up for the ministry fair and I'm going to start showing up for things because they're going to need me because without me, they're going to fall apart 
It's not of me. It's not, nothing that I have done, but our sufficiency. Right? The, the, the fruit that I can bear, the, the things that I can perform, the tasks that I can help you with, our sufficiency is of God. It's not because I'm some great man, but it's because I serve a great God and he desires me to serve him. And if I'm capable and the best that I'm able, I'm going to serve him with everything I can because it's not of me, it's of God. With man, this is impossible. Right? I, I think I face that a lot like, I am never going to be able to do this. But with God, all things are possible. Right? We have to keep that mindset when we are trying to express and show people who God is. I, I think at times our testimonies become the biggest hindrance to our lives, to our witness. Right? There, there, are, there are people, I think, and Christians sometimes will, will glorify and, and will put these people on a pedestal because, man, think of everything that they've overcome. And they're such an amazing person. And, man, they used to be on drugs and they used to be living in the ditches. And, man, they used to be this person. But look at them now. And that person could maybe allow that to go to their head and be like, well, I used to be like you. But now look at me. And the person who was like that says, have fun with that. We, we, don't, we don't need that. H humility is so key. It's nothing that I have done. It's nothing that I could accomplish. It's nothing that I could create or manifest in and of myself. But it's only by the grace of God that I'm able to do anything for him. A anything. And Paul's saying this is so important. And this is such a, an important aspect. This, this portion of scripture really, uh, chapter number three here, is really uh, directing itself towards this new covenant. This, this new uh, um, agreement that God said, listen, this is how things are going to happen now. It's by the fruit that you produce. It's by your humility that people see it. Right? But really it's ultimate. It's only by the spirit. It's only by the Spirit. Verse number six said, who also hath made us all ministers of the New Testament, this, this new covenant with God, this New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Not, not, not of the Ten Commandments, but of the Holy Spirit of God. Right? Why? For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The Ten Commandments sends people to hell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, the, the, the letter killeth. He, he's saying those, those commandments, that law that we have all followed and we have all given our lives to following and learning and, and trying to apply to our lives, that killeth. So, so what's he trying to say? He, he's peeling it back. He's saying, listen, the Ten Commandments were never designed to give you access to heaven. The, the, the Ten Commandments, they were given to you. They, they were uh, put into your lives to show you how much you really, really, really need God. How much you really, really, really need a Savior. That's what they were designed to do. That's why they were given. Not, not for you to say, I have followed all of these, but for you to say, man, I am really in desperate need. That's why we use them to this day as a good soul winning tool. Right? You ever watch uh, um, Living Waters? I think it's the name of his ministry, right? And Ray Comfort, right? He, he goes out and, and man, he's great interacting with people and he gets right to it and he often will refer to this and be like, have you ever stolen anything? And they're like looking around. Yes. Right? He's like, yeah. He's like, have you ever committed adultery? They're like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, have you ever lusted after somebody? Well, yeah. You know? And he's like, have you ever done this? He's like, well, by your own admittance, you're a, a liar and a thief and an adulterer and... Why would God let you into heaven? Well, well, I don't know. Let me tell you, by accepting who Jesus Christ is, 
right? Not, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. That moment that you place your faith in who God is, he sends the Spirit to indwell your life. The letter killeth, it, it tells you your need, but the Spirit giveth life. That, that, that's what we long for. That's what we need. But what was the purpose of the law? I mean, Romans 7, verses 9 through 11, it tells us, it says, For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was adorned right to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by my commandment, right, deceived me and by it slew me. What's he saying? Man, I, I was alive once without the law, but then when I realized, when I truly saw what the law was, it just showed me how awful and evil, and man, it just basically killed me. It, it just condemned me. It, it told me how wicked of a person I truly was. It showed me how rotten I really was. Galatians 3 verse number 10 puts it this way for us. It says, for as many as are the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. What's he saying? For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things that which are written in the book of the law to do them. If you can't follow every single aspect of the law perfectly, you're already cursed. You're already done for. That was the purpose. That was the, the original intent, that the complete goal of the law. It was for us and for our realization, oh man, I need God so bad. I am in desperate, dire need of a savior. But as a believer, right, not under the law, Romans 6, verse number 14, it says this, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law but under grace. Hey, as a believer in Christ, understand this. Those, those commandments, those things, should we keep uh, uh, the Holy Spirit indwelling us, prods us and points us and directs our lives to do good, right? To want to follow God the best that we possibly can, obey through obedience and humility and observance of who he is, but... Right? Sin doesn't have dominion over you in the aspect of the law, but under, you're under grace now. You're, 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 you're under who God has allowed you to be through salvation in him. Galatians 5, verse number 18, right? It says, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. That's not who you are anymore. We, you don't have to continually wake up and, and have your checklist of, I did this, I did this, I obeyed this, I'm doing this, I'm awesome, I'm awesome, I'm awesome. Look at me. Oh, aren't I of this person? Aren't I this type of individual? Aren't I this amazing Christian because I've kept this law and done this and behaved this way? What does that do? That completely destroys everything that Paul's talking about here in 2 Corinthians 3. Right? All the law was doing was giving you some uh, recommendation, some credit to who you are as a person. And people used that, right? The Pharisees and the Sadducees, man, they were all about it, especially those Sadducees. Right? They, they were all about the law. This is who we are. Look how amazing I am and how horrible you are. Man, by the grace of God, though, I can look to you and be like, man, God loves you just like he loves me. Isn't that a wonderful thing? And Paul's saying, listen, even though society is going to deem you and, and expect some fancy recommendation, right? Even though, hey, guess what? You can prove it. We have such a wonderful proof of who we are in Christ through our fruit, through our humility and service to him and our uh, witness to him and through this Holy Spirit in our lives. Man, don't, nobody comes to God. Nobody comes to salvation because you went out and knocked on a door. 
You can be an instrument used by the Holy Spirit of God in your life to, to lead. But man, the Spirit has to draw them, doesn't he? That's what scripture tells me, right? It's nothing that I've done, but only by the grace of God, right? So man, as we approach um, moving forward, right? That this, the, man, the goal of our church should be what? Seeing people saved and in doing so, man, we have to truly understand our fruit, our humility, and the spirit working in us is the only way. That is the only way we're going to see it. It's not some fancy program that we start. It's not some fancy skill that you have. It's God working through us. Man, Paul's letting us know, hey, it's not about some high recommendation. It's not about some, some, some fancy piece of paper. What it's about is the spirit of God. What, what, what it's about it's not about the Ten Commandments, right? It's about Christ. Man, as we go through life, we, we got to understand, right? That, that, that old saying, that, hey, the proof is in the pudding. Right? There, there are some wonderful Christian men that I've met. And I'm like, God uses you? Right? Why? Because we're, so, we're such visual and, and right man look at on the outward. Right? It's so easy for us to look at people and be like, what? Right? I mean, what? Uh, um, when David was selected as king, right? When he was anointed, right? They're going down and they're like, this has got to be the guy. This has got to be the guy. This has got to be the guy. He's got stature. He's got skill. He's got looks. He's got everything. They're like, nope, 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 nope. God looks on the heart. The proof's in the pudding. Right? The, the proof's in the pudding. What was the end of that? I, I, I liked how, how it got. It's, it's the, the real worth, the success, the effectiveness of something can only be determined by putting it to the test. Right? When, when we're tested is when our true character comes out. When a, a difficult or questioning or frustrating time presents itself, that's when who we truly are presents itself. So all that fancy accreditation and all those fancy uh, papers and credentials that we have claiming to be Christians and I go to this church and I've gone to this college and I've gotten this degree and I've done all of these wonderful things and served for years and then the first frustrating moment comes up and you start cussing or, or backsliding or whatever it is, people look at you and go, wow, so that's who you are. The proof's in the burning, right? Appearances aside, promises aside, right? They want to see your fruit. Hey, people who are visiting Elm Grove Baptist Church, they want to see our fruit. They, they want to see what we have accomplished through the working of God in our church, right? Uh, I mean, what, what else? They, they, want to see their, they want to see our humility, there's not a stronger, better, Bible-believing, Bible-preaching this church within 50 miles of here. We can't say that. I don't know. There could be a, a church in somebody's garage in, in Tonganoxie who's preaching the word and seeing people saved every week. Right? We, we, we can't. We have to be humble. Oh, man, look at everything you guys done. No, God's done that here. <laughs> I couldn't have done it. There's no way. God, God did that. Right? What, what else? Hey, people need to see the spirit. Man, I, I pray for that. Lord, pour out your spirit on us. Hey, hey let, let us know you're here. Let us know that you're constantly here. I, I want to be walking in the spirit. I want the indwelling. I want to know that the spirit is with me in my daily life. Because why? I can't, I'm nothing without him. And when that is present in my life, that's when people truly can grab a hold and be like, okay, you are what you say you are. Uh, right? That's what, what does the Lord say? Hey, taste and see that I'm good. Let me prove it to you. Let, let, let me show you how amazing I am. Right? The proof's in the pudding. 
Amen. Let's pray. And then we'll take up some prayer requests tonight. Lord, just thank you for this lesson. Just looking at the, the church of Corinth here and Paul writing, just expressing some needed information for them to see. Lord, I, I think as we apply and as we look at it in our own lives, I pray that we uh, are able to show forth our fruit, that, that we're able to have that humble spirit in service to you. Lord, that, that individuals can see your spirit in our lives. Lord, I pray for this church, and I do pray that you continue to guide us forward. Help us to be a church that's on fire for you. Or be with these prayer requests tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.